forgotten when we lay comparisons aside. When your forgiveness is complete, you will have total gratitude. So now, and this is another one of the 12 things, by the way, that we'll get to. So now it's telling me that in order to have complete gratitude, I've got to work on this forgiveness thing. Seems like every week we got this forgiveness thing just keeps coming up. For gratitude is but an aspect of the love which is the source of all creation. God, ooh, this, here, this will, this will throw you for a loop. God gives thanks to you. God gives thanks to you, his child, for being what you are. That's kind of a different perspective. For love can walk no road except the way of gratitude, and thus we go who walk the way of God. So now, so here's, a, here's a, uh, an exercise that we can do. So when, uh, when, we, when we see someone coming, or when, uh, let's say we are anticipating a future event, and we know we're going somewhere, and there's going to be someone there who we are having a problem with, and definitely we would not normally think we'd be grateful to be in their presence. Here's this little prayer. Thanks be to you. Now you're talking to this person who you don't want to see, okay? Thanks be to you, O holy son or daughter of God. For as you were created, you contain all good within yourself just as do I. Don't say that to him. Don't say it out loud. <laughs> In gratitude and thankfulness. Think about approaching, think about approaching a day. Think about approaching an event. Think about approaching any kind of impending thing. And, 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 and think about having this attitude. In gratitude and thankfulness we come. With empty hands and open hearts. Asking but what you give. And of course, this is, like a, this is like a prayer to God, right? This is a prayer. So I'm going to go into my day with gratitude and thankfulness. I'm going to open my heart. I'm going to open my mind. And I'm going to ask only what God has to give. Well, we already know what that is, see. We know, we know what it is, even though we, we get nervous. When we ask that, oh boy, we're leaving open all kinds of things. Anything could happen now. Anything could happen. But only thing God gives is love. Now, if we flip this around and think about every person and every situation that we come across, that this prayer also applies because it is everything that we see, every one that we see, is just one of God's creations. Inseparable from God. So then, to go out into, into life with gratitude and thankfulness, expecting everyone and everything to give love. Now this is key to, a, to an attitude that's very helpful throughout life. And that then means that even when all of a sudden it looks like they're not, which I guarantee you, it will happen. He said, well, shh, I prayed this morning. And I, and I, I saw it clearly that everybody was going to give me love. And they just don't seem like they're giving me love right now but to realize that it was a misinterpretation. Somebody has a misinterpretation going on. And if there is one, we're both participating in it. The other person and me, we're both participating in it. And once recognized, then, and see, because this is the underlying reality. The underlying reality is, as in the meditation, we are always giving love. Even when our behavior looks like it's something else. That at, at our core, at that, at that center of spirit, we are always extending love. The ego tries to interfere with that extension and puts out all kinds of bad behavior out there. But at spirit level, we are always giving love. And so is everyone else. So my practice needs to be, let me see beyond 
this apparent behavior, my own and theirs, to the truth that we are both exchanging the love of God. All the time. Uh, and, not, and I mean, when I say all the time, I mean in eternity. So, apparently, they didn't get the memo. It seems like when I'm out there in the world, nobody else is on the same wavelength, right? I mean, how is it? How is it? Some days, you do your meditation, you get yourself all centered, you go out there, you're just floating on a cloud. Everything's going, and and everything seems to be like going, just like it's supposed to. It's beautiful. Now I know somebody somewhere through the day, somebody might throw a monkey wrench in it. But what I want to get to is that at other days you can do the same practice and go out there and almost immediately something happens. And I'm just going to tell you what happened. You just got distracted earlier than usual. That's all that happened. Just got distracted from the love. Something occurred that triggered a fear. And the ego got to get itself in there. It looked like it was their fault. And it's fine. You may be able even to prove that it was their fault. You could convince somebody. You could call me on the phone and say, you can't believe what just happened, and you give me the whole story, and I'll believe you until I start to remember that, wait a minute, I'd only got half the story here. And, when I, and then I realized that even if I had both sides of the story, it's still not the truth. Because the truth is that we're exchanging love. So whatever conflict was going on, that's just an illusion that we decided to participate in. So here's the deal. This gratitude, this establishing this gratitude overcomes these kind of obstacles. It's one of the things that overcomes these kind of conflicts because I can go back to center myself in this idea that I am grateful for life. And I've, hey, and I've got these five things that I wrote down yesterday <coughs> that I can go back and put my attention on. Or the, anything that I can identify if I can stop for a moment and say, okay, what do I... You know, I remember when uh, years and years ago when I first uh, got into recovery, I called with a complaint to someone and they said, you need to sit down and write a gratitude list. It worked then and it works now. If I can change my... See, it's, a, it's, it's moving my mind from being on the complaint to being on this affirmative thing. It moves my mind from being on, on a complaining uh, plane to being on an appreciative plane. When I, begin, when I put my focus back on what I have to be grateful for. I'm going to end with this. Gratitude is a lesson. Hard to learn for those who look upon the world amiss. It's hard to learn when we look upon the world as a place of trouble, as a place of pain, as a place of hate. The most that they can do is see themselves better off than others. And they try to be content because another seems to suffer more than they. How pitiful and deprecating are such thoughts. For who has cause for thanks while others have less cause? And who could suffer less because he sees another suffer more? Our gratitude is due him alone, do God alone, who made all cause of sorrow disappear throughout the world. That's enough. Thank you.